Welcome. So I'm here with our sponsor um, from Great, Ex Great Expectations, KJ. We're so happy to have you here. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you for having me. I'm really enjoying this. I spent many years downtown, and we didn't have this yes. when, in the 70s and in the 80s. <laughs> it's in come quite a long way. Oh, no, this is wonderful. I think it's terrific. Yeah, so first off, thank you for bringing um, a bottle of your wine, and yeah. I think we've almost killed the bottle. Well, I hope so. so um, I so have seven cases in the car. So. <laughs> I'm going to need you to go get those in a minute. <laughs> so first off, tell us a little bit about the, the team building experience that Grape Expectation has. Well, what, what we are is a private client winery whereby groups or individuals come and make a barrel of wine. Now, a barrel of wine consists of 240 bottles or 20 cases. And it takes 756 pounds of grapes to make that one barrel of wine. But now people can't come and handle 756 pounds of grapes because it's almost impossible. So we require our growers to hand pick the grapes in the vineyard and put them in 36 pound crates. Put them in a refrigerated truck, send them over to the winery in Henderson, and then you and your group come at an appointed time and you actually start the five step process, which begins with crushing and distemming the grapes, yeah. fermentation, pressing, Later on, in the, after the Super Bowl, we do racking, and then we do bottling in, uh, in May. And then also in May, we bring grapes in from South, from, uh, South America, from Chile, and so we have year-round production at the winery. And so we have about 3,250 people making wine with us right now. And everything starts this Saturday. The grapes are a couple week early, weeks early, the harvest is, so we've been accelerating our uh, preliminary activities over there, working a lot of hours, getting ready for all yeah. that onslaught of people and the grapes. And the people, the, the fun thing is the social aspect of the winemaking process because the actual uh, work it only takes about 45 or 50 minutes, but people come an hour before and they stay for three hours later because they bring wine and they bring food and some bring their own chefs. And uh, there's a lot of team building among those groups as well. Mm -hmm. The different hotels get together and they'll uh, bring their groups and uh, uh, some of the restaurants get together and they want to outdo each other with food. But part and parcel to the whole process is the individual groups who just like wine. And they come and they make wine, they have a, they have a ball. And we have about 85% retention every year in our clientele. So wow. that just shows you. We, we, went from a, we went from a place that was about 3,000 square feet to we're at 12,200 square feet now, so we're pretty big. And we're very proud of what we do, and we're proud of the support that we get from the community. So Yeah. So when you speak about team building experiences, that's a long process, though, because it starts, but then it goes on for how long? Well, it starts in October and then ends in May, but you only have to be there four or five times, except for the parties. We have Christmas parties. We have barrel rub parties. We have St. Patty's Day Parade, which starts with a Bloody Mary party. And, uh, <laughs> ends up with a drinking party back at the winery. So there's all kinds of activities through the year. We also allow our winemakers to use the facility for birthday party, company party, or just a barrel rub party just to have some fun because they're always going to bring somebody that has never been there. Yeah. And that's our marketing strategy. I don't take many billboards out. I don't take much radio and TV. This is what we like, the social media yeah. and the show and tell. So. So how do groups decide what they're going to make? They're, they don't know anything that's, about That's wine. one of the things. Like if you get that bottle of wine right here and it says, uh, let's see what this bottle said. It says uh, Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot. I also happen to know that it has some Cabernet Franc in there as well. But just because a bottle of wine says it has Cabernet Sauvignon in it, it only has to have 75%. So most people, they have no clue what's really in the bottle of wine they're drinking unless it's written on the back of the label, which more and more wineries are doing now. But for the most part, they don't have a clue. So I ask them to come to the winery, bring a bottle of wine you like, all these five, six, eight bottles of wine, okay. and we'll figure it out. And of course, we come to consensus with a little bit of a <clears throat> headache, maybe, and a <laughs> little bit of tipsy, but I will guide them along the way because you're gonna have some people who like a Moscato, and other people who like a 
or Rhone Valley. I know that people would like a Chianti, which would be Sangiovese base. And so we figure out what the consensus likes. Then we order the grapes, and they come in from our, <coughs> excuse me, from our growers that are in the north coast in California, from uh, Napa and Sonoma and Russian River, Lodi, Amadora Valley, all up in the, that, that region. And uh, they come in and they make their wine, and most of them like it because they keep coming back for more. Yeah. <laughs> So outside of grape expectations, and inside sources told me you're quite a character when you're drinking wine. I hear there's like a New Year's Eve story that involves a Christmas tree that got in your way. Oh, good God. You want to touch on that? <laughs> Just because I feel like this group would really appreciate uh, that. I don't know if you see the, uh, if there's a hotel that has a B on the top down here. I used to have an M on the top. That was the Mint, the Mint Hotel. Some of you might know the Mint 400 Desert Race, which I was part of. But anyway, the Mint was a Del Webb property. And one of our uh, purchasing agents decided he was going to uh, decorate with Christmas decorations right after Halloween. And he put a Christmas tree right in the most inopportune spot at the top of the Mint restaurant where everybody that had to go to the restroom would pass by it and would knock into it. And of course, I mean, I was beside myself, but my boss said, listen, let it, we'll, we'll change it next year. Because this is all out of my budget, all this money that we were spending. Christmas Eve, I mean, New Year's Eve comes, we have a New Year's Eve party, we go to the top of the mint, we start dancing, and I have to go to the restroom, and I knocked into that Christmas tree, and I said, enough's enough. I drug it from its perch, <laughs> I took it across the dance floor at the top of the mint, and up to the pool deck, with the top of Binion's, there's a pool up there, and threw it off the top. <laughs> now, we have, at the mint, we had the top four floors have an outside terrace. So you could look down the strip. This is before the Golden Nugget was built. It blocked a little bit of the view. But anyway, unbeknownst to me or anybody else, there was a couple out there having their champagne, and they thought somebody had committed suicide. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, you know, the fan was hit with some kind of uh, stuff. And <laughs> anyway, about January 5th, my boss, boss calls me in and says, KJ, what the heck did you do New Year's Eve? I said, well, I was with you. We did the party. We did the... He says, no, later. He said, well, did you moon anybody? I said, of course, I moon everybody every, <laughs> every New Year's. Uh, he said, but what about, did you throw your Christmas tree off? I said, yeah, I did throw it off. And he said, well, they are really after you down in Phoenix. They are really angry, and I've got to suspend you. I said, suspend me? Well, for how long? He said, for a month. I said, for a month? Uh, starting when? He says, that now. I says, oh, okay. So I went back to my office, got my secretary to get Delta on the phone. They got me a flight, I went to Europe, and I skied in the Alps for a month. <laughs> True story. Now my boss goes down to a big meeting, big corporate meeting down in Phoenix, and he says, uh, well, the president of the corporation says, uh, how's KJ taking his punishment? And he says, are you kidding? How's he taking his punishment? He could never get a month off from me. <laughs> He's over in the Alps skiing, and he had a hell of a ball. So anyway, that's kind of that story, but it's true. And John L. Smith, in his column, alluded to it about a year ago. In the, when the Binions closed their rooms, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, we, he, he called me and asked me, and I told him I did not, well, I was not naked when I threw off the Christmas tree. <laughs> That's always and a plus. Was, and that was the part. That was the part. I said I did moan, but I was not naked. So I don't know if this story is good or bad advertising for wine, but it's all about making your mark, right? Well, yeah, and <laughs> people know you, and I know people. People know me out at the winery just for that little. A little bit that I did <laughs> New Year's Eve yeah. 30 years ago. <laughs> they never forget it. But anyway, that was the fun. That's All the right. Fun. So people can find you on your website, grapeexpectationslasvegas.com. Right. And then they can email you at you make the you wine. You make it the wine. You make it the wine at AOL.com. At AOL.com because we make it okay. the wine one barrel at a time. And any one of you that you can come out there anytime and watch the process, remember that, hey, I saw you on the show. And please bring whoever you like. I'll show you the whole process, and you'll have some fun, I guarantee it. And we'll drink some wine. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. And don't forget thank to uh, sus subscribe to the Downtown Podcast on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter and Vine. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, that work? Yeah. That's good. Thank you.